Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, how can I help you? Scotty's Pizza and Chicken has been voted best pizza in Marshfield 15 years in a row. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken is ready for your call now at 715-384-8118. Choose Drunken Chicken, BLT, Western, Mac and Cheese, Sweet Chili Chicken, and more. Plus, Scotty's has roasted chicken, fish, sandwiches, salads, and desserts. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, 715-384-8118 and scottyspizza.com. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, how can I help you?
At the Granite Shop, we take great pride in what we do. We offer high quality natural stone granite as well as a huge selection of man-made stone. With full slabs as well as a variety of partial remnants, you'll have no problem finding the stone that was meant for you. Our high-end, high-quality granite, quartz, and marble is perfect for any kitchen, bathroom, or remodel need. We are locally owned and operated on County Road C near Stratford. We service all of Wisconsin.
an employee at once asked me to prioritize family, faith, and business. And I put them in that order in particular. For each one of our employees, it's family first. You do what is best for you and your family. Then the rest of it will take care of itself. It's about making sure you make the best decisions for you and your family. Hi, I'm Malachi from Northside Computers and Cellular. We are currently offering a great savings of two phone lines for $50, and it includes unlimited talk, text, and data. Stop down at Northside Computers and Cellular, 907 South Central Avenue, Marshfield, to see how you can save on your internet, cable, and phone bills. We have the best providers under one roof. Two phone lines, $50. Get mobile, internet, and television all under one roof. Northside Computer and Cellular of Marshfield. Need furniture? Come to Mall Furniture in Marshfield and get it now. We have what you want in stock. Do you need a new, two-sided Wisconsin-built mattress set or adjustable bed? We have them in stock. Power lift chairs, rocker or wall recliner. How about a glider rocker or swivel rocker? We have them. Sofas, sectionals and sleepers. Reclining and stationary. Leather and cloth. Choose from Marshfield Furniture, Lazy Boy and Best Home Furnishing. See our expanded Wolfcraft Maple and Oak. Made in Marshfield Furniture. Bring your truck or trailer and take it with you. Or have it delivered for a small fee. Good day, my name is Ken Hyman and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin as a matter of fact. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Fetacaseri, Cafletiri, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey as well as making Edom, Gouda and Munster. And the cheese be with you. Snow piles up quickly. Remove it just as quickly with Kubota subcompact and compact tractors. Our number one selling tractors are built to take on winter with front and rear mount snow blowers, blades, and rotary sweepers. Get select Kubota subcompact or compact tractors for zero down, 0% zero APR for up to 60 months and save $1,000. See your local Kubota dealer today. Your local Kubota dealer is Chili Implement, located one mile north of Highway 10 in Chile. I really got to understand what <clears throat> what a nurse is. Do they do they focus on you? You know, do they make sure that you're comfortable? And you know, that's what Chai has. It's the connection that he has. You know, my best interest in mind always. Why wait another day? Let's take the next step together towards a better life. You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older, I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys, me. Hey Mike, I'm Sheila from Security and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? Why work for Staub Construction? Everybody around you is just family. Everybody seems to bond together and get along good, and they, I believe, truly care about their employees. Staub has a, a great benefits package. Staub is an employee-owned company that uh, puts a, a large emphasis on work-life balance. And everybody wants to see everybody succeed. It's a good place to work. Join the team at Staub Construction. Apply now at staubco.com. Culligan Water delivers from your first call, to your first sip, to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. Wondering what to feed your team after work, the game, or this weekend? Chips Hamburgers in Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids has tasty char-broiled burgers for any hungry appetite. From the classic hamburger, 
to the famous Chips Champ and everything in between, check out our daily specials. Stop inside to enjoy your meal with comfortable seating. See our complete menu of burgers, hot ham and cheese, hot beef, chicken and fish, fries, rings, curds and ice cream served year-round. In a hurry? Same great menu in the drive-thru. Chips Hamburgers in Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids. 2023 was a year of change. Innovation, building something new, and teamwork. The h &S legacy is evolving, and we're carrying it forward. Designing equipment that helps farmers get the job done. Looking ahead to the future of farming while staying true to the values that have brought us this far and made us who we are today. h &S, Strong heritage, strong people, stronger future. Bauer and Fine has been based in Marshfield since 1955. And if you're in business that long, you're obviously doing many things right. We always focus on selling world-class products, backing it up with world-class customer support. Working with Bauer and Fine Business Technologies has been a pleasure. We have staff on call that we can call if we ever have issues, and the printer usability has been really easy, user-friendly. Give us a call, visit our website. We'd be happy to come in, talk to you. Maybe there's a way we can help you save some money and work more efficiently. Central Wisconsin Glass is Central Wisconsin's choice for your next new or remodeled shower and bathroom. The experts at Central Wisconsin Glass will effortlessly guide you through the design and installation process. Have the elegant and modern shower and bathroom you've been looking for. Call Central Wisconsin Glass at 715-387-8010. That's 715-387-8010. And Central Wisconsin Glass on Facebook for your residential, commercial, and vehicle glass needs. Let your job journey begin at Express Employment Professionals. Find hundreds of employers looking for a candidate like you, all in one place at one time. And let Express Employment help connect you with your future career. With locations in Stevens Point, Wausau, Marshfield, and Medford, you'll find local jobs right in your community, including direct hire and evaluation hire opportunities. Express Employment specializes in light industrial, skilled trades, professional, and office careers. Begin your job journey today with Express Employment Professionals at Express Pros.com. Witness the difference of a Catholic education at Columbus Catholic Schools. I think everyone should just know uh, what makes this place special. Come and see. That's just what the Lord always said. And put your toe in the water. There are great schools and it's a good fit. I'd always want them to come in and to just feel the goodness and the family atmosphere. I invite everyone just to come in and see what it's about and to see if it might be right for them and their family. We invite you to schedule a tour today.
for your next new or remodeled shower and bathroom. The experts at Central Wisconsin Glass will effortlessly guide you through the design and installation process. Have the elegant and modern shower and bathroom you've been looking for. Call Central Wisconsin Glass at 715-387-8010. That's 715-387-8010. And Central Wisconsin Glass on Facebook for your residential, commercial, and vehicle glass needs.
Let your job journey begin at Express Employment Professionals. Find hundreds of employers looking for a candidate like you, all in one place at one time. And let Express Employment help connect you with your future career. With locations in Stevens Point, Wausau, Marshfield, and Medford, you'll find local jobs right in your community, including direct hire and evaluation to hire opportunities. Express Employment specializes in light industrial, skilled trades, professional, and office careers. Begin your job journey today with Express Employment Professionals at Express Pros.com.
Witness the difference of a Catholic education at Columbus Catholic Schools. I think everyone should just know um, what makes this place special. Come and see. That's just what the Lord always said. And put your toe in the water. There are great schools and it's a good fit. I'd always want them to come and to just to feel the goodness and the family atmosphere. I invite everyone just to come in and see what it's about and to see if it might be right for them and their family. We invite you to schedule a tour today.
everyone, and welcome in to 2024 WIAA Boys Basketball Action live on Zaleski Sports. My name is Caleb Jacoby alongside Isaac Eagle and Elena Eagle doing the production here tonight. Tonight it is as big of a conference matchup as we will see here this season in the Clover Belt East. It's the Columbus Dons hosting the Nielsville Warriors here tonight. Columbus comes in as the number one team in the Clover Belt East. Also number one in Division 5 this season. At this point in the season, they've climbed back up to number one with those wins over Spencer and Pacelli last week, or earlier this week, I should say, for the Pacelli game. But they're 8-0 in conference play, 15-1 overall. The Don's first place in the Clover Belt East for Nielsville. They are 10-6 overall, 7-1 in conference play. Good for second place in the Clover Belt East so far this season. And, you know, I, with Nielsville, I was at the first game between these two teams, myself and Ben Brecht on the call in that one. It was, fun fact, the only single-digit win, single-digit deficit win for the Dons all year. Every other win for Columbus this season of their 15 has been by 10 points or more. Nielsville was the only team that has been able to keep, been able to stay within 10 points of the Dons out of the teams that they have beaten. Of course, they had that one loss to Brookfield Academy of course, they lost that game, but out of all the games they won, Nielsville was the closest. They came the closest to beating the Dons out of any of the teams that lost them this season. And in that game, again, it was a nine-point win for the Dons, 63-54 at Nielsville. But a big thing to point out with this Nielsville Warrior team, after that Dons loss, they were 1-5 overall on the season. 1-5, and, and after that game, myself and Ben Breck both talked about this, how, the, how that Nielsville team was so much better than their 1-5 record appeared at that point in the season. And since then, they've rattled off 9 out of their last 10, 9-1 in their last 10 games. And the only loss that they have had since that Don's loss was against Auburndale at Auburndale, which was the game of the season, a quadruple overtime buzzer-beating victory for the Eagles in that game. So they very easily, they're two points away and a quadruple overtime two-point loss away from being 10-0 since that Don's loss. So this game, I think, is going to be as good of a game as we'll see that the Don's play uh, coming up this year. We should be in for an excellent, excellent game um, here tonight. This uh, gym is packed here tonight with Don's fans, with Warrior fans. And again, I think there's good reason why. I think we are going to be in for as good of a game as we've seen the Dons play this season, at least I should say as competitive of a game as we've seen the Dons play this season because for the most part they've they've routed every single team they've played this year outside of Brookfield Academy. And uh, Nielsville is probably the team that, along with Prairie Duchene, the team that has played the Dons the toughest this season already. And now Nielsville is as hot as they've been all season long, 9-1 and one, since they started 1-5 and five after that Columbus Dons loss. So, I really believe that we are in for a fantastic game here in this one, and we'll we'll get to talk about both these teams as this game comes around. Uh, this game starts and goes on, but for Nielsville in Division Four, uh, I, I don't think there's any team that wants to see uh, uh, Nielsville. And again, when the postseason comes around um, in Division Four, again that that Auburndale game was one of the best games that we have seen all season long. We're going to take a quick break, be back with your national anthem after this on Zaleski Sports. The Sports Den, located on Marshfield's sunny south side since 1975. The Sports Den has the area's best selection of outdoor equipment, find top brands of snowshoes, cross country and downhill skis, snowboards, swimming equipment, skateboards, and more. The Sports Den has a full service bike repair center along with top bike brands, specialized Trek and others. The Sports Den is Central Wisconsin's fat bike headquarters. Visit the Sports Den in Marshfield Monday through Saturday and thesportsden.net. And those defending your freedom for the playing of our national anthem by the best band in the land, here called the High School Pet Band under the direction of Mr. Tom Zimmerman.
right, that was your national anthem here from Columbus Catholic High School as the Dons get set to take on the Nielsville Warriors here tonight. And it'll be the starting lineups now from the floor, starting with the Nielsville Warriors here tonight. For Nielsville, their leading scorers this season, Andrew Hazer leading the way this year, averaging 12 points per game. Ashton Schultz, second place on the team in scoring, averaging nine a game. Braylon Boyer at eight and a half and for rebounds. Sam Hayes is averaging seven rebounds a game. Ashton Schultz, six. And for assists, Bryce Erickson leads the way with four assists. But your starting lineups, the five foot ten senior Cameron Kennedy, number three. And number 10, the five foot ten senior Braylon Boyer. And a sophomore, the leading scorer for this team, number 11, the sophomore, six foot five, Andrew Hazer. And it's number 15, the six foot senior, Bryce Erickson. And rounding out the starting lineup for the Warriors, it is the six foot three senior, Ashton Schultz for Nielsville. Again, Nielsville comes into this game having won nine of their last 10 games since their loss at home to Columbus. They put them at one and five, and again, we talked about it after that Columbus loss that this Nielsville team was significantly better than their one and five record showed, and they have proven it in the last 10 games going nine and one. And again, they were very close to beating a really, really good Auburndale team a few weeks ago in that quadruple overtime loss. And if it wasn't for a buzzer beating three from Auburndale, Nielsville would be 10-0 in their last 10 games since that Don's loss. Now the starting lineups for the Columbus Don's. You can pretty much take your pick scoring-wise for this team, but leading the way here this season so far has been Blake Jacoby, averaging 13.7 points per game. Emmett Konechny, who has been back in the starting lineup for the Don's the last two games. He started against Spencer, and he started against Pacelli. And he's really, I think, starting to look uh, like he's in mid-season form after that injury. But Emmett Konechny averaging 13 points per game. Charlie Moore averaging 13 points per game as well for the Don. Cy Becker not far behind either. Take your pick with the Don scoring-wise. Starting lineup, Emmett Konechny. Good to hear him back into that starting lineup. Back at home. His first game starting at home at all this season for Emmett Konechny. Lucas Krecklau. Of course, an all-senior starting lineup for the Dons with Emmett back in there. Again, it is Emmett Konechny, the senior. Another senior, Lucas Krecklau. Charlie Moore, the senior for the Dons as well. Of course, it's Blake Jacoby, number 13 in the starting lineup. And rounding out the starting five, it is number 25, the senior, Cy Becker. And again, this, is Emmett, this will be Emmett Konechny's first game started at home this season for the Dons. He's played at home of course this year as he's slowly tried to come back from that injury uh, from earlier in the season and started at Spencer, started at Pacelli earlier this week and now gets a chance to start in the in his first home start of the 2023-2024 WIAA basketball season and the Dons at this point now really, I mean both teams really start trying to rev up and play your best basketball of the season as the postseason tournament looms just around the corner and we should be in for a great one here tonight. This game will assuredly decide, I think, the conference. If Nielsville is able to win this game, they might be in a spot where they're going to share a conference title with Columbus, but if Columbus comes out with a win, they have, uh, they're well on their way to winning the conference outright with a win here tonight. Blake Jacoby misses the left wing three to start things off. Back the other way come the Warriors. Andrew Hazer, the sophomore, brings it up. And he's led the way in scoring so far this season for the Warriors. Here's a right wing three. Good look, no good from Braylon Boyer. Now we have a whistle and a foul going to go against the Warriors here. They get Bryce Erickson on the foul. His first personal, team first, first foul of the game. Will go on Bryce Erickson, and it's the Dons back the other way. Again, these stands are absolutely packed to the brim here tonight. We got some fans standing here tonight. Charlie Moore in the corner to Kreckle. He may have had a good look there. Emmett Konechny wants the three, and he's got it. Emmett Konechny from downtown. He was on fire in the second half against Pacelli on Monday. 
And he was just hoisting away from three and absolutely nailing threes from downtown in that second half for the Dons. Braylon Boyer up top to Hazer. Back over to Cameron Kennedy. Attacks the basket. Tough left-hand floater in and out from Kennedy, but he gets his own rebound, kicks it outside. And Nielsville will reset their offense here. Missed jumper from Ashton Schultz. Back the other way come the Dons. Konechny over to Jacoby. Back up top. Konechny for three. No good. Kreklau the board. Out to Moore. Again, both these teams in his own defense to start things off. The Dons in their typical 2-3 we've seen from them all year long. Get a second to get another look at that Nielsville defense. See what exactly, what type of zone that is. And get a good look first couple of possessions. Again, it does, and I think myself and Ben Brecht, we talked about this a little bit as Blake Jacoby left wide open for three. No one anywhere near him, and he misses it. Even though Jacoby missed that, that is uh, not going to be defense you'll be able to play all game if you're Nielsville. That is, that is basically a layup for uh, most of these Don's three-point shooters. Just uh, lucky that uh, Jacoby missed that are the Warriors there. Here on the interior, battle for the ball, and a jump ball forced there by Blake Jacoby. And possession sticks with the Warriors. To inbound here, Bryce Erickson. Erickson gets it into Schultz. Schultz up top. Swings it over to Kennedy, back up to Hazer. And here's a left wing three for Boyer again. No good. Another offensive rebound for Erickson now and a foul on the Dons. Foul goes against Charlie Moore, his first personal team first. Kennedy right wing. Kennedy is the guy that hit uh, at least one of those huge shots at the end of that Auburndale game to, to a nearly give uh, Nielsville the win, but then Auburndale came down and hit a buzzer-beating three. And Nielsville with a lot of different guys that can uh, beat you offensively as well. We, talked about, we talk about that a lot with the Dons, but Nielsville... A lot of offensive weapons, I think, as well. At least a lot of different guys that can score in different, way, in different ways. Bryce Erickson for two on the inside there. And back the other way come the Dons. Again, this Nielsville zone defense, it looks like a 3-2. Um, it's not a defense you see often, but it's a defense they'll play. Side Becker with a little mid-range jump shot. And that should be the opening. Against the 3-2, that, a 3-2 probably going to be a, a defense that's looking to take away that three-point shot. With that last wide open three given up uh, to Jacoby, not included. And here's an offensive foul. Going to be called against Bryce Erickson. And that's going to be Erickson's second foul. He'll have to check out of the game. And Lucas Kreklau falls to the floor. And Erickson doesn't like the call. But again, this is, as we got a timeout on the floor, I'll finish that thought after uh, the break. But we'll take a break. Be back after this on Zaleski Sports. Hello, I'm Jenny Shaner, realtor, next home, Hub City. If you're a first-time home buyer or seller, or you've been around the block, because of my experience, I'm able to help you in the most efficient way. I'm a full-time, full-service realtor. I focus on my clients 100%. Let's work together as a team for a win in your next real estate transaction. Last foul here. Here's going to be a replay of that last foul. Welcome back, everybody, as you see Kreklau falls to the floor in there. And, again, it's tough to tell. It's tough to tell. Kreklau is uh, – Kreklau and Jacoby both – it's a skill to be able to draw fouls. And, again, sometimes you can call them flops. Sometimes you can call them uh, drawing fouls. I couldn't tell clearly from that, uh, that play, but um, the Dons are a team that – they know they're not, they don't have a lot of size. We've talked about this a lot this season. So it's, it's a skill to develop to make things look like fouls. Emma Konechny for three. Knocks it down. Emma Konechny is coming out shooting here tonight. I think he knows how big of a game this is for his Dons. And he's taken three threes, knocked down two of them. Hazer for three. No good. And now we got a whistle. And I think we're going to have a reach in here on Nielsville. Yes. As that foul will go against Ashton Schultz, his first personal. 
Again, Max Kretlau is into the game now for Nielsville as well. He comes in for Bryce Erickson with those two fouls. Konechny brings it up the other way. And that one, Konechny tried to fit it into Kretlau there, but well played by Kretlau. And we got Kretlau and Kretlau. Sounds pretty similar, but it's Kretlau for the Warriors. Kretlau for the Dons. In the corner here, Jacoby. Looks like Nielsville, they may have switched to a man-to-man -man here. No, actually, I don't think they have. Might be in a 2-3 now, but Moore goes baseline up top to Konechny. Back out to Moore. Inside Becker in the high post. He lost it for a moment. Out to Moore. Attacks. That is a tough shot and no good from Charlie Moore. And there wasn't a lot of room there. Well defended by the Warriors that time. Braylon Boyer swings it over to Kretlau. Kretlau left wing. Gets it into the high post for Schultz. Good flash there. Misses on the jump shot. Offensive rebound for Kretlau. Nielsville's done a really nice job uh, getting offensive rebounds tonight, but haven't been able to hit outside shots yet. Ashton Schultz no good there. Now we got a whistle and another foul on Nielsville. Goes on Max Kretlau. Jacoby inbound here as it'll be the Don's possession once again. Couple of substitutions, Sam Hayes. Checks into the game. And looks like Bryce Erickson's back in with those two fouls. So two fouls for Erickson. Going to have to be careful out there. With 13 and a half minutes left in this first half. Again, that again. I, I don't know what else to call it, but a 3-2 zone. You, you don't see a 3-2 very often, but Nielsville has deployed it a couple of times this season or throughout this season. And again, I think against the Dons, it, it, does, uh, it does make sense. Almost kind of like a matchup zone. Or sometimes it does look, does look like a man-to-man -man defense sometimes. But Becker, open look for three, and it's good for Cy Becker. Becker will hit those if you leave them open. As will most of this Dons team. 11-2 Columbus early here. And that's going to be an ill-advised pass from Kennedy. Turned over. Swing over to Jacoby from downtown is good. Blake Jacoby and the Dons are on fire to start things off, and they are absolutely fired up on their sideline. 14-2 Columbus with an early lead here tonight. We'll take a break. Be back with more Cloverbelt East basketball after this on Zaleski Sports. We know how a bank should be at Partners Bank. Banking should be easier, treating our customers as valued and important. Services should be better with online and mobile banking and locations close to where you live and work. Loans should be quicker, and we make all decisions locally with years of experience helping people with their financing needs. Partners Bank, member FDIC and an equal housing lender. After a couple years of a job that doesn't fit, it's time for more money, more opportunity. That is where Mid-State Technical College comes in. Would cooking be a good fit? Try on a career in welding. Perhaps the outdoors suits you better. Or maybe helping people is a better fit. No matter your path, we've got cutting edge classes with field trained professionals and better tuition options, making Mid-State the perfect fit. Welcome back, everybody. Columbus leads 14-2. And for Dons fans, this is a familiar sight, uh, watching the Dons be up double digits in the first five minutes. But, again, I, I have to say, th this is as impressive of a start for the Dons as we've seen this season because Nielsville is an excellent team. We've just talked about that uh, throughout the, uh, the run they've been on uh, since the Dons last beat them, 9-1, playing Auburndale as close as uh, anybody other than the Dons who gave them their one of their two losses this year has played them, but there's a turnover for Nielsville. Here's a three from Becker, no good. So again, it's quite an impressive start to say the least for the Dons on this one. I know they usually start off like this, but Nielsville is a better team than most of the teams the Dons have played this season. Not all of them, but most. So it, this is not easy what the Dons are doing right now. Hazer pass inside here to Erickson, and now we got a whistle and a kickball violation on the Dons. As Matt Konechny will sub in for the first time here for the Dons. He checks in for Charlie Moore. 
And in for the Warriors is Ashton Schultz. And it also looks like we've got uh, Jason Zaleski in attendance here tonight. Uh, see him sitting up on the stage over there. And again, so if you want to know how big of a game this is, uh, just uh, look at Jason Zaleski's in attendance. That's how you know it's a big game. And uh, Jason's just volunteering his time to come down here and uh, take a look at these Dons and Warriors play basketball. Here's a foul against Nielsville. Goes against Andrew Hazer. Be his first personal team, fifth. As Emmett Konechny will bring it up here for Columbus. And Konechny has just been ultra aggressive on, on the offensive side of the floor these last couple of games. And, and as he should be, he's getting back He's getting back into the rhythm and groove that he typically likes to play in uh, before that injury. And I think he, I think it's I think it's safe to say he he's back. Uh, it, it just, I mean, he was back the first time he stepped back out on the floor and scored 18 points in about eight minutes. But it's going to be another Nielsville turnover. But uh, he really has gotten back into just playing the game, I think, the way he wants to play it since he's been back into the starting lineup. Konechny, a decent look from out there, and another one for Emmett Konechny. He is feeling it here in this first half. Nine points, three for four from three for Emmett Konechny. And again, this is why the Dons are the number one ranked team in the state of Wisconsin for Division Five. There is a reason for it. They have got shooters everywhere, and beyond that, they have really, I think, improved continuously throughout this season on the defensive side of the floor. That foul goes against Lucas Krecklau. Because, again, with the Dons, you watch them play. It's easy to focus on the shooting, easy to focus on all that as, as I guess they said Bryce Erickson was shooting there. So he'll go to the line for two. And he misses the first. But, again, it's easy with the Dons to look at their offense, and they, they are high-flying. They play fast. They, they shoot incredibly well pretty much every game you watch, uh, no matter who they play. But... Um, defensively, I think they have been very, very good this season, um, even against good teams. I think like, Niel like Nielsville tonight, to be holding them to two points right now is quite impressive, to say the least. And 0 for 2 from the line that time for the Warriors. And that goes out off of Columbus. And possession stays with Nielsville. So Erickson will inbound here. Again, the way the Dons have started this game, they have just come out. I think they can, they can tell. They, they know how big of a game this is as there's a three for Ashton Schultz, and that's got to feel good for the Warriors just to see one of those threes go down because they've had a couple of decent looks, just haven't been able to hit them so far, and it's got to feel good for Schultz and this Nielsville offense to see one of those threes go in as Jacoby wants another three, and he knocks it down. And the Dons say, well, you hit a three, we'll just come back and knock one down as well. 20 to 5, Columbus. And that's going to be a backcourt violation against Nielsville. And yeah, just kind of a mental lapse there for the Warriors. As Kennedy threw it into the backcourt. And he was, he was well across half court there, but it'll be the fourth turnover for Nielsville. Columbus, no turnovers yet. 20 to 5, your score. And the Dons have just come out, and they have just looked absolutely locked in from the start. There haven't been many moments. I would say there haven't been any moments this year where, well, Blake Jacoby wide open for three there, no good. And, again, that's just a, it. If you're Coach Geyer, you, maybe you have to think about coming out of that zone at some point here. Uh, having done almost all the Dons games this season, most teams don't play zone against them simply because they shoot the ball so well. And against the zone defense, it's typically easier to get open looks from three as Konechny tries a contested three, and it's short. But, again, we haven't seen a lot of teams play zone against the Dons. They're such a tough team to play zone against. And I wouldn't be shocked to see Nielsville maybe switch to a man-to-man, -man as there's a good look from downtown, and it is good for Wesley Sweeta. Wesley Sweeta from downtown, and a couple of threes for Nielsville, and back to a 12-point game. Into the corner here for Jacoby. Jacoby up top to Konechny. Konechny back out to Jacoby. And again, you can see in this zone, with as quick as the Dons pass it, it's just too easy to get good looks as Jacoby misses in there. That was a good look for Jacoby, just missed it. The Dons just moved the ball too quickly to me to play zone against them. And again, maybe you're worried you don't have the athletes, but it's a tough team to play zone against. And there's going to be a turnover as Becker falls to the floor. 
Dons back the other way. Konechny skips it over to Matt Konechny. Up top now to Jacoby. Jacoby right wing, and that's a dangerous pass. Nearly stolen away outside to Mack. Mack, and Mack had Emmett open right wing. Just didn't, didn't quite see him over there, but Emmett Konechny would have had a wide open look over there. Up top here to Becker. Becker kicks it out. Konechny, another good look for three, and it's good. Emmett Konechny from downtown. He has got 12 points, four threes in the first half for Emmett Konechny. And again, I just, I, I'm just kind of waiting for Nielsville to switch to man-to-man -man right now because it's just, it, it's just too easy for the Dons to get wide open threes. It, it, it is. And, and, I, and I shouldn't even say wide open because the threes haven't necessarily been wide open as that foul goes against, I don't know who they called that against, but I thought I saw a two in the four lined up, but Sam Dooms isn't out on the floor. I'll try to get that figured out uh, at halftime, but... But again, for Nielsville defensively, they haven't been wide open threes, but they're good catch and shoot looks. And I, the Dons, just from how they played all year, I don't, I, I think they're going to get that against any zone they play. And there's a missed shot on the inside from Erickson. And the, the thing for Nielsville, I, I wouldn't say Nielsville has significantly worse athletes than the Dons. I, I don't think they have guys that I would say, oh, they just can't stay in front of the Dons. I, I don't know if I, if I see that. So I, it's... We'll see what Nielsville decides to do here. Looks like they are in man-to-man. -man. There you go. And let me get a double. Let me just look at that again because that 3-2 zone they play, sometimes this looks like a man-to-man -man at different times. But I'm going to double check that. But it's going to be it's a foul against Jace Peckle. And Dons will inbound it here. Konechny into Charlie Moore. In the corner, this is a man-to-man -man defense now from Nielsville. And again, I think that's a good decision as Cy Becker misses on the inside. Great move, though, by Cy Becker. Just try to get in between those two defenders there. Here's a three from the left wing. Short, now a whistle, and that will go against the Warriors. I think they're going to get Peckle again. Does go against Jace Peckle. And Again, the energy is just high here tonight. The gym is packed. It's a conference matchup between the two top teams in the conference this year. It's, you just feel the tensions high on both sides, the emotions high out onto the court. And these are, these are the games that are fun to, fun to call, even though it is a 15-point lead right now for the Dons. But, again, this game far from over. We, we, we saw Nielsville be down double digits to the Dons in their first game against them, and they cut it back I think, to within a, a point or two. Um, and uh, that was a pretty close basketball game, as we've talked about already on the broadcast. But Don's the other way here. Now working against the man-to-man -man defense from Nielsville as Matt Konechny into the corner for Dooms. Sam Dooms checks in for the Dons. Emmett. And this is where you'll see Emmett Konechny attack the basket a little bit more, try to create for his teammates and attack the rim and score at the rim a little bit when he goes against man-to-man. -man. Becker skips it over to Konechny. Good look for three. No good. And again, even though that was an open look for Columbus as Sam Dooms forces the jump ball and the Dons keep possession here, great play by Sam Dooms. But even though that was an open look for Konechny, it's just against a man-to-man, -man, you're having to deal with more contact um, uh, more of the time. You're having to just – it just your, your points usually come harder against a man-to-man -man defense if you can play well in that man-to-man. -man. So I think even though Emmett was wide open there, he didn't miss it. He, I, you got to move around. You got to work harder for your baskets against a man-to-man. -man, typically, as Charlie Moore scores at the rim, but the Dons are an excellent offensive team. And uh, even if you play great defense, which I think that was pretty solid defense, they'll still score against you. Here's Wesley Sweeta skips it up to Bryce Erickson. Erickson attacks, kicks to the corner. Boyer may have had a good look there, but didn't shoot it. And now we got a whistle and a foul on the Dons. It's like much to the chagrin of Coach Konechny over there. Goes on Sam Dooms. It's his first personal. Team fourth. Blake Jacoby checks in for Emmett Konechny. Asuita checks out as well. Alex Edwards comes in for the first time tonight for the Dons. He checks in for Cy Becker. Cameron Kennedy back into the game for the Warriors. Pass in here to Ashton Schultz. Schultz up top to Boyer. Boyer skips it back over to Schultz. Schultz left wing, back up top to Boyer. Again, the Dons, and talking about zones, the Dons play that 2-3 zone almost exclusively. At times, they will shift to a man-to-man -man as Ashton 
Schultz no good from three there. Nielsville has not been able to find the touch from outside so far. As Dooms attacks, and he's called for the travel. First turnover for the Dons tonight, but again, talking about zone and man-to-man -man defenses tonight. The Dons play a 2-3. The problem for Nielsville so far tonight, they haven't been able to consistently hit the three ball well enough to get the Dons to come out of it. If Nielsville would have hit a couple of these threes on these last few possessions, they've hit two in the game. Um, but if they're, if they're able to knock down some outside shots, you'll see the Dons come out of that zone and have to go to man-to-man. -man. As that's going to be a hard foul from Alex Edwards as Ashton Schultz goes to the line. That foul actually goes against Blake Jacoby, his first personal team fifth. Two free throws coming up for Ashton Schultz. He's got three points tonight. And misses that free throw. That's also been a, a struggle so far tonight for Nielsville's free throw shooting. They're now 0 for 3 from the free throw line so far. Andrew Hazer checks in and sophomore Hazer. We need to get something going tonight for, for the Warriors as well. The leading scorer on the season doesn't have, doesn't have any points yet tonight as Schultz knocks down the free throw. Emma Konechny quickly back into the game. Checks in for his brother Matt Konechny. Blake Jacoby brings it up. Don's lead it by 16 here in the first half. Jacoby skips it over to Edwards into the corner for Emmett Konechny. Up top it's Dooms. Dooms one of the few guys that is not going to take those outside shots for the Don's. That's a tough shot for Emmett Konechny. No good. And that's what I'm talking about. It's, you know, it, that, was, that was great defense by Nielsville forcing, forcing Emmett Konechny into a tough shot. There's a three for Andrew Hazer. And it's a 13-point game. Hazer knocks down the three, and that's, I think Nielsville's going to need that. They need Hazer to get going on the offensive uh, side of the floor. Moore into the corner for Edwards. Nielsville doing a nice job, I think, defensively now out there in a man-to-man. Blake Jacoby, though, gets some room there and cuts to the basket, scores for two. But again, to me, they're tougher shots. They're shots that take more energy out of an offense um, than just catching and shooting threes, which the Dons had been able to do against that zone. Konechny brings it up here. And tight man-to-man -man pressure here. Konechny attacks in the corner. Alex Edwards for three, no good. Back the other way come the Warriors. Ashton Schultz skips it over. Hazer tries another one, no good. And another offensive rebound for Nielsville. Braylon Boyer for two. That has been something that Nielsville has had the advantage all night. Offensive rebounds. Been hustling to the glass so far tonight. Konechny, mid-range jump shot is good. That is smooth from Emmett Konechny. He has got 14 first-half points. Again, this Don's team just so tough to stop as Boyer misses on that three. Another offensive rebound for Nielsville. Kennedy for three, knocks it down. Cameron Kennedy from downtown. Again, it's just... I. This Don's team, and now it looks like, no, still man-to-man -man here for Nielsville. Again, I think man to man's the way to defend, but even when you defend a man-to-man, -man, it's just a team that has so much offensive skill, it's tough to defend. Charlie Moore in and out. That one was all but in for Charlie Moore, but somehow rattles out, but out of bounds off of the Warriors, much to the chagrin of Nielsville fans of some Nielsville fans down there on the floor. I couldn't really see it from this angle. Emmett Konechny to inbound here. Gets it into Blake Jacoby. Jacoby up top. Defended by Erickson. Takes the ball screen. Skips it out to Moore. Back up top for Becker. Now Moore right wing in the corner for Jacoby. Skip over Becker. Wide open for three. That's short. And a rebound for Nielsville. And good look, though, for Becker. Kennedy attacks in transition and a whistle, a foul. Who are they going to call it on? As there's a wedge there as a blocking foul is going to go against Lucas Kreklau. And again, the Dons will try to draw those charges. They, they probably do that. The, the Dons probably try to draw charges more than any team I've seen over the last four years in high school basketball. It is... A part of it's a part of the, how they play defense. It just is. They know they don't have a lot of size, and they try to step in and draw those charges as much as they can. As Kennedy in and out on the free throw, but for Nielsville, you gotta. 
And you're leaving points at the free throw line right now. They're one for five as a team tonight from the line. Sam Dooms right back into the game for the Dons, and I think maybe Coach Konechny wanting Dooms in there to try and get some rebounds for this Columbus team. Right now, that's been the problem so far tonight. Even though the Dons are up by 11 points, the problem that they've had tonight is, is rebounding, uh, getting defensive rebounds. So I think Dooms into this game probably to shore that up. That's really his strength is doing those hustle, hustle things for this Dons team, and he's a great rebounder, really good defender on the inside as well, and... And Coach Konechny wants him out there to bring some of that, uh, that fire to his, uh, to his team as he's been called for a couple of travels, though. There's one, and he might come out of the game now, and he does. Matt Konechny will check in for him. That's a tough part as a coach. You know, you've got players that have certain strengths, certain weaknesses, and you, know, you, you try to balance that out and figure out your, your best rotations, best guys come out on the floor. That was very close to being another backcourt violation. It was not, though. Erickson skips it over here to Kretlau. Kretlau can shoot as well. Erickson, nice post move there. A little jump hook on Charlie Moore. And I like that decision. I like the decision on for Nielsville going to the basket a little bit more. Getting Erickson in there. He's got some size. The Dons do not have size. Takes Charlie Moore on the inside. And again, I think pretty smart adjustment there offensively. Like to see more of that from the Warriors as Konechny. Some great defense by Cameron Kennedy. This is what I was talking about early in the game. This is now a nine-point game here. I was I was a little surprised to see Nielsville in that zone as Jacoby not nearly hits that three. It was open. But, I mean, you saw Cameron Kennedy's defense there was did a great job, a great job against Emma Konechny. And now this is going to be a Don's foul, and tensions are really starting to flare here. We're getting the fans getting into it. Players are getting into it, and this is a conference matchup, no doubt. Both teams know how big of a game this is. Erickson gets it into Kennedy. Back inside Erickson. If I'm Erickson here, just attack and good find there, but a missed layup. Another offensive rebound. Kretlau, another miss. Battle for the board, and, and Nielsville's going to be kicking themselves there. They had a couple of really good looks that they should have knocked down. Jacoby back in the corner to Moore. Up top to Becker. Skip over to Matt Konechny. Mack outside to Moore. Tries the three, and no good. Matt Konechny, the offensive rebound. Again, you've noticed, though, Columbus not hitting so many threes. And, again, I really think it's because they're having to come off of screens from in the paint up to the three-point line, try and hit some of these threes. It just takes more energy. You've got to run around a lot, whereas in a zone, you're just kind of standing there waiting for the pass. Emmett Konechny, no good. So, again, I think you're seeing it. Since Nielsville has switched to this man-to-man, -man, it has been a totally different game. Erickson right wing into the corner for Kennedy for three, and it's good. Cameron Kennedy from downtown, and Nielsville is back into this ballgame. 29-23 Columbus. Pass over here to side Becker. Becker finds more, and I think it's safe to say you won't see Nielsville in a zone again tonight. Jacoby left wing. Back outside to Matt Konechny. He tries the three. No good, and that was it's off the backboard there, and in transition, layup up and good for Andrew Hazer, and the Warriors have all of the momentum right now. The Dons looking for an answer, still up by four. But Nielsville has totally shifted the momentum here as Cy Becker losing the basketball. This has been excellent man-to-man -man defense. Coach Konechny wants a timeout. Cameron Kennedy getting in the face a little bit there. Matt Konechny, you can see the, the tempers running high. Teams don't like each other. We'll take a break. 29-25 Columbus back after this on Zaleski Sports. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, how can I help you? Scotty's Pizza and Chicken has been voted best pizza in Marshfield 15 years in a row. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken is ready for your call now at 715-384-8118. Choose Drunken Chicken, BLT, Western, Mac and Cheese, Sweet Chili Chicken, and more. Plus, Scotty's has roasted chicken, fish, sandwiches, salads, and desserts. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, 715-384-8118 and scottyspizza.com. Scotty's Pizza and Chicken, how can I help you? Welcome back, everybody, and just want to take another moment to just highlight how well this, this Nielsville team is playing defensively in that man-to-man. -man. Again, the Dons have gotten a couple open looks from three. They've still gotten those looks, but they're having to come off of screens and, and run off of these Nielsville defenders. I mean, Cameron Kennedy has done a fantastic job against Emmett Konechny so far. Um, Ashton Schultz doing a great job defending on the inside. 
I mean, the, the, shot, the, the, the shots are just not coming in as, as easy for the Dons. Konechny for three, and that was another good contest there. Matt Konechny, though, battling for these offensive rebounds, and he's coming up with them. Emmett left wing. Emmett attacking the basket. Tough shot. He's fouled to go to the line for two. But again, that was, I mean, that's not an easy look. You're, you're forcing the Dons in a situation where they're having to attack the basket and take not the easiest shots. Now, I think a, a, a good decision there by Emmett Konechny to attack the basket against a man-to-man -man and try to draw that foul. But again, it's just it's night and day right now defensively for Nielsville since they have switched to a man-to-man. -man. Emmett Konechny knocks down the free throw. He's at your Jamie Wenzel Serve Pro free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel over at Serve Pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration. Serve Pro like it never even happened. Konechny knocks them both down. As Konechny will check out, Sam Dooms checks back in. The physicality has just, the, the physicality of this game has just risen to 10 out of 10 since Nielsville switched to that man-to-man -man defense. 31-25 Columbus. Hazer skips it over to Erickson. Again, I think if you're Nielsville, don't be afraid to go in the post here. I think even if you're Hazer with, with McEnany defending you as they're going to turn it over there, and if you're Nielsville, you can't do that. But, again, you, you've got, I think, some size advantages here. Some of your guards have a little bit more size to them than some of the Columbus guards. I think you can take advantage of some of that in the post as Mac attacks the basket blocked by Hazer. Just fabulous defense played, being played right now by these Warriors. Erickson travels with it. They just got to stay out of their own way offensively right now. A couple of travels, a couple of turnovers. They've got eight first half turnovers. As Konechny checks back in for Dooms. And again, I would expect, uh, if you're looking at it, I've talked a lot about the Nielsville's perspective. Looking at it from the Don's perspective, I would expect a couple of things. Emmett to continue attacking the basket for the Don's as he's probably uh, the best finisher on this team along with Cy Becker. Um, and then Blake Jacoby, maybe look at some of these uh, pull-up mid-range jump shots off the dribble. He really likes uh, uh, those as well. But again, those are all, all those shots are tougher shots than wide open threes as you're just standing and waiting for a pass that you'll get against the zone. And this is going to be a foul on Nielsville against Jace Peckle. And Peckle is picking up the fouls tonight. He's got three now. And Matt Konechny will go back to the free throw line. Single bonus free throws here for Mack. And Dooms back in for Emmett Konechny. Nathan Nemitz checks in for the first time tonight. In for Charlie Moore. Matt Konechny, one and one free throws here. Misses off back iron there. And again, earlier in this game, the PA announcer talked about not wanting people to be standing by the doors, getting to a seat. Understand that, but to be honest with you, as that's going to end the first half from Andrew Hazer, but we'll get into that thought a little bit later. But Andrew Hazer misses at the buzzer, and it's 31-25 to Columbus. We should be in for an excellent second half. We're going to take a break, though, and be back to break down this first half of action right after this on Zaleski Sports. At the Granite Shop, we take great pride in what we do. We offer high quality natural stone granite as well as a huge selection of man-made stone. With full slabs as well as a variety of partial remnants, you'll have no problem finding the stone that was meant for you. Our high-end, high quality granite, quartz, and marble is perfect for any kitchen, bathroom, or remodel need. We are locally owned and operated on County Road C near Stratford. We service all of Wisconsin. I had an employee at once ask me to prioritize family, faith, and business. And I put them in that order in particular. For each one of our employees, it's family first. You do what is best for you and your family. Then the rest of it will take care of itself. It's about making sure you make the best decisions for you and your family. Hi, I'm Malachi from Northside Computers and Cellular. We are currently offering a great savings of two phone lines for $50, and it includes unlimited talk, text, and data. Stop down at Northside Computers and Cellular to 907 South Central Avenue, Marshfield, to see how you can save on your internet, cable, and phone bills. We have the best providers under one roof. Two phone lines, $50. 
Get mobile, internet, and television all under one roof. Northside Computer and Cellular of Marshfield. Need furniture? Come to Mall Furniture in Marshfield and get it now. We have what you want in stock. Do you need a new, two-sided Wisconsin-built mattress set or adjustable bed? We have them in stock. Power lift chairs, rocker or wall recliner. How about a glider rocker or swivel rocker? We have them. Sofas, sectionals and sleepers. Reclining and stationary. Leather and cloth. Choose from Marshfield Furniture, Lazy Boy and Best Home Furnishing. See our expanded Wolfcraft Maple and Oak. Made in Marshfield Furniture. Bring your truck or trailer and take it with you. Or have it delivered for a small fee. Welcome back, everybody. A live look at the future of uh, Columbus Dons basketball out there on the floor. The dribbling Dons, uh, girls and boys, uh, youth basketball players trying to just learn the, learn the fundamentals of the game out there. They're going to do some, I think they're called the dribbling Dons, so I think they're going to do some dribbling out there. Uh, but while they do that, let's take a chance to hear from our friends over at Mutual of Wausau. Mutual of Wausau Insurance, protecting homes, farms, and businesses since 1875. Visit mutualofwausau.com to find an agent near you. And the Viaduct Bar and Grill of Marshfield serves juicy half-pound burgers daily. The Viaduct Bar and Grill is also home to cold drinks and fish fry Friday. The Viaduct Bar and Grill on Marshfield's fabulous northwest side. And the Grey Dog Axe Throwing. The Grey Dog Axe Throwing is now open in Marshfield. It's fun for all ages, eight and older, so bring the whole family. Join a league or plan a party. Book your awesome experience today. Visit thegreydogaxe.com or find them on Facebook for more information and get Culligan Water for only $9.95 a month for the first three months. Visit Sterling Culligan Water at CulliganH2O.com. And SC Swiderski, an SCS apartment or home is where you want to live, work, and play all throughout central Wisconsin, the Chippewa Valley, and the Fox Valley. No matter where you live, look to SC Swiderski to make you feel right at home. Visit SCSwiderski.com for more. And Sports Scene, Sports Scene in Marshfield is your official fanware store for player jerseys, hats, autograph memorabilia, and more. Sports Scene up the stairs from World Buffet in the Marshfield Mall. Now we're going to take another quick break, and we will be back to break down this first half. Got a lot to talk about, about the, in this first half. Uh, Nielsville stormed back there to end the first half. We'll talk about that, the Don's hot start, right after this on Zaleski Sports. Good day, my name is Ken Hyman and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin as a matter of fact. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Feta Caceri, Cafeteria, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey as well as making Edam, Gouda and Munster. And the cheese be with you. Snow piles up quickly. Remove it just as quickly with Kubota subcompact and compact tractors. Our number one selling tractors are built to take on winter with front and rear mount snow blowers, blades, and rotary sweepers. Get select Kubota subcompact or compact tractors for zero down, 0% 0 APR for up to 60 months and save $1,000. See your local Kubota dealer today. Your local Kubota dealer is Chili Implement, located one mile north of Highway 10 in Chile. I really got to understand what <clears throat> what a nurse is. Do they do they focus on you? You know, do they make sure that you're comfortable? And you know, that's what Chai has. It's the connection that he has. You know, my best interest in mind always. Why wait another day? Let's take the next step together towards a better life. You're tuned in to Better Halves. Mike, what are you looking for? Skip, I'm not getting older, I'm getting better. I still got big plans for my life and my Medicare. I know exactly what you want from Medicare. Same as all the other guys, me. <laughs> hey Mike, I'm Sheila from Security and I'm just like you. In fact, I'm from your neighborhood and I've got a Medicare plan that treats you like you. Did it just get better in here? Welcome back, everybody, to a live look at Jason Zaleski, the boss man of the whole operation here at Zaleski Sports. Trying to get him to look up here, but he, he's enjoying his uh, dinner over there. But there's a live look at the uh, boss man here at Zaleski Sports. 
And Stop Construction is a premier builder of municipal and industrial water and wastewater treatment systems in the Midwest. Stop Construction has been partnering with private and public customers since 1984. Stop Construction has its own service and fabrication department to assist with any municipal or industrial situation. Stop Construction, a 100% employee-owned company. And here in this first half, it was a great first half. Columbus started off absolutely on fire. I believe it was 25-8 to eight at one point in that first half. That would mean a 23-6 to six run for Nielsville. And again, to me, from this broadcaster's uh, point of view and eyes, obviously offensively they started hitting more shots. They started getting some, some better shots offensively. But to me, the real difference was the switch to a man-to-man -man defense against these Dons where the Dons were just kind of able to – they got good looks from three against that zone. They were just able to kind of stand out there on the perimeter, catch the ball, and walk into easy threes. And since that switch to a man-to-man, -man, they're, they're, you're having to run around screens, uh, work a lot harder there for your shots. And since then, the Dons, they haven't been even hitting the open looks from three. So I just think, uh, I think in that second half, that's going to be the interesting thing to see, an adjustment for the Dons. Uh, can they come out and, and do better against that man-to-man uh, -man defense from Nielsville? And Coach Koneshny is out here talking to these uh, – these um, these uh, Columbus dribblers again. He's he's man. This whole Columbus program it deserves. I mean, as much credit as anybody for why this Columbus uh, basketball program is so good. But um, that it's going to be an interesting second half here. As again, you can take get a live look there at uh, the boss man Jason Zaleski eating a sandwich, eating something over there, and there he is. Now he see now he sees it up there, and he's shaking his head. Now we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with your second half right after this on Zaleski Sports. Why work for Stop Construction? Everybody around you is just family. Everybody seems to bond together and get along good, and they, I believe, truly care about their employees. Stop has a, a great benefits package. Stop is an employee-owned company that uh, puts a, a large emphasis on work-life balance. And everybody wants to see everybody succeed. It's a good place to work. Join the team at Stop Construction. Apply now at stopco.com. Culligan Water delivers from your first call, to your first sip, to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. Wondering what to feed your team after work, the game, or this weekend? Chips Hamburgers in Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids has tasty char-broiled burgers for any hungry appetite. From the classic hamburger, to the famous Chips Champ and everything in between, check out our daily specials. Stop inside to enjoy your meal with comfortable seating. See our complete menu of burgers, hot ham and cheese, hot beef, chicken and fish, fries, rings, curds and ice cream served year-round. In a hurry? Same great menu in the drive through Chips Hamburgers in Marshfield and Wisconsin Rapids. 2023 was a year of change. Innovation, building something new, and teamwork. The h &S legacy is evolving, and we're carrying it forward. Designing equipment that helps farmers get the job done. Looking ahead to the future of farming while staying true to the values that have brought us this far and made us who we are today. h &S, Strong heritage. Strong people. Stronger future. Bauer & Fine has been based in Marshfield since 1955. And if you're in business that long, you're obviously doing many things right. We always focus on selling world-class products, backing it up with world-class customer support. Working with Brown Fine Business Technologies has been a pleasure. We have staff on call that we can call if we ever have issues, and the printer usability has been really easy, user-friendly. Give us a call, visit our website. We'd be happy to come in, talk to you. Maybe there's a way we can help you save some money and work more efficiently. Welcome back, everybody. 31-25 as we get set to start the second half here. Columbus leads Nielsville. Ag Country, Ag Country Farm Credit Services is a farmer-owned co-op offering a wide array of custom financing and financial services. From loans and leases to crop insurance and tax and records, they have you covered. Contact Ag Country in Stevens Point, Wausau, Marshfield, and Medford. And Fleet Farm. Pick up all your pet's favorites from Fleet Farm. Find everything from food and treats to toys and health products under one roof from all the brands you trust, dogs or cats, they've got you covered. Shop your pet's everyday essentials at Fleet Farm. And Blues Hair Studio, it's a new year and a new you at Blues Hair Studio on North Central Avenue in Marshfield. 
The stylists at Blue's Hair Studio are ready to help you be the best version of yourself. Book your appointment for a fresh start in 2024 at Blue's Hair Studio in Marshfield. And thanks to our game day sponsors, Hawkins Ash, Draxler Transport, Woodfield Inn and Suites, and Rems Funeral Home, and Express Employment. Find your next career path with just a phone call to Express Employment Professionals. With locations in Wausau, Stevens Point, and Marshfield, no matter where you are in central Wisconsin, save yourself some time and find your next employer at ExpressPros.com. We are just about set to get underway here in this second half, and we should be in for a great second half of basketball. I think a couple things to look out for for both teams. How do the Dons adjust to the man-to-man -man defense from Nielsville? Um, can they score well against it like they did against the zone? Um, and I think for Nielsville on your offensive end, can you attack the basket and, and take advantage of some of that? A uh, couple of just size advantages you might have in there. Nielsville isn't a huge team, but I mean they've got, uh, for example, Mr. Andrew Hazer, the sophomore, listed at six foot five. I mean there, there's there's nobody above six one on this Don's you know typical uh, lineup that comes out there as Jacoby misses a three to start things off. And back the other way come the Warriors. Inside here, and a battle on the inside to start things off. No good on the shot from Ashton Schultz. And a tough shot, Cameron Kennedy, count it, and one. Cameron Kennedy has now got nine points, and he's got a chance to make this a three-point game with a chance to convert this and one. And again, for the Dons, it was a quick shot from Jacoby right off the bat, and, and as soon as the first possession for the Nielsville, immediately they attacked the basket. And again, to me, that's the formula for this Nielsville team in the second half. Obviously, you get an open look from three, especially you got Hazer, a good shooter out there, a couple other guys as well. You take those shots, but this Nielsville team, I think the key, if you can, if you can attack the basket, try to take advantage of the Don's lack of size, that's, that's the key is more attacks here, and Kennedy's on the floor. Becker for three, it's good. But we got a whistle. Oh, an offensive foul on Blake Jacoby here. So that's going to wipe three points off the board. Or... Did or what? I don't think there was a foul call. Maybe a travel on on the Dons. A turnover, nonetheless. I don't think there was a foul called. It's 31-27, Columbus. Erickson. Now again, the Dons in that two-three. It's not always easy to get on the inside, but if you're persistent enough and take care of that basketball, you can make it happen. Hazer, open look from three. It's good. Andrew Hazer from downtown. He's got eight points. And if he keeps knocking those down, Coach Kanishny may have to come out of that zone defense he's been in. Or that he's had his team in. 31-30 here in this second half. Kreklau kick out to Jacoby in the corner for Becker. Up top to Charlie Moore. Back outside to Emmett Kanishny. Kanishny, that's a tough shot, no good. And again, now the Dons are starting to force some bad shots. Starting to see them, I think, get a little frustrated offensively. You've got to credit that to this Nielsville defense. I think the Dons are getting a little bit frustrated that they haven't gotten as open a looks as they would like as Boyer tries a three, and the Warriors have the lead. Braylon Boyer from downtown. He's got five points. Nielsville has taken the lead for the first time tonight. Becker wants the three, and he knocks it down. A huge shot from Cy Becker to just try to quell that Nielsville momentum and keep it from uh, getting out of control here in this one because Nielsville really, right now, has all the momentum. That was a huge three. Hazer, no good. Don's back the other way. Konechny, they've got numbers. Five on four. Moore back to Jacoby. They can't take advantage of the numbers, though. That's a missed opportunity for Columbus with a five on four not to be able to get a, get a good look there, but they'll reset their offense. Becker goes back door to Jacoby. Stolen away by Erickson. Back the other way for the Warriors. Erickson to the basket. Little floater is short. Battle for the rebound. Schultz has it. Now whistling a foul, and Lucas Kreklau is now getting into it a little bit here with Ashton Schultz. And glad that's ended again. The tempers are running high here tonight. Uh, Kreklau giving Jacoby a couple of shoves in the back. I think, uh, I think those were a playful teammate shove, not a furious shove but three fouls now for Lucas Kreklau and Kreklau he's a player that he's a high emotion player Lucas Kreklau he's again he's a guy that has been described to me as someone who you love to have on your team but you absolutely despise playing against 
That's because he's that enforcer for this Don's team. And good thing that didn't get too out of hand there. Just good, competitive, good competitiveness there. Cameron Kennedy misses on that three. Back the other way come the Dons and Konichny. Dons with a one-point lead here. Man, has Cameron Kennedy done a great job defending Emmett Konechny in the second half. Konechny, good pump fake. Kick out to Moore. Good look for three. No good. Konechny with the rebound. That was a good look for Charlie Moore, though. Don't expect him to miss many of those. Becker outside to Moore. Up top, Konechny. He wants the three, and it's good. Emmett Konechny from downtown. Another big shot there. As the Dons continuing to fire away from three again. That is what they do better than maybe any team in the state of Wisconsin is shoot the three ball. And there is two points for Ashton Schultz. Some Dons fans wanted to travel. It may have been one extra step, but and he made it look smooth enough. That again, it, it was a close call and got away with it. And now a foul. Blake Jacoby's going to have two free throws. And I really don't even know if that was a travel on the other end, but... Doesn't matter, two points. Andrew Hazer going to be called for his second personal foul. Blake Jacoby heads to your Surf Pro. Jamie Wenzel free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel at Surf Pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration. Surf Pro like it never even happened. Blake Jacoby knocks down the first free throw. He has got nine points now. And... Konechny has got a uh, piece of something he just handed to the sideline. Not sure what that was, but or something on the floor. Blake Jacoby back to the line. And he goes two for two from the Jamie Wenzel Surf Pro free throw line. Bryce Erickson brings it up here. Again, this is just... This is late season basketball for you. Exactly the kind of game you want to see this late in the season. Conference matchup. Two top teams in the conference as Sam Dooms comes up with a steal here. Ashton Schultz lost it. Konechny, corner three is short and off the rafters up there. Out of bounds. Well, not quite the rafters, I suppose. Not, not quite that high, but up over the, the backboard and out of bounds. No good there from Konechny. Again, I, I wouldn't be shocked to see Emmett, Emmett Konechny attack the basket a little bit more. Again, he's, I think, maybe more than any guard on the, on the Don's team, Cy Becker more of a forward, but I, I, I wouldn't be shocked or I, I think it may be a good idea for Cy Becker and Emmett Konechny to attack the basket a little bit more. Those two guys really can finish at the rim very well as it's going to be a couple of free throws here for Bryce Erickson. You know, again, in today's kind of day and age of basketball, you see a lot of three-point shooting, but I think against... Really tough man-to-man -to -man defense. The answer a lot of times is attack the rim strong. And I think Nielsville has been doing that a little bit as this game has gone on as Bryce Erickson to the free throw line here. But I think even for Columbus, a team you think about, they just shoot threes. I think two guys I, I would specifically call out, Cy Becker and Emma Konechny specifically, two guys that really can be effective at attacking the rim. And... Uh, be shocked to see that. I think it'd be a good idea, perhaps, for those two guys to attack the rim a little bit more here in the second half as Nielsville continues to play tough man-to-man -to -man defense. And Blake Jacoby can do it as well, but misses on the on the lay-in there. And he tried a little bit of a finesse finger roll. He didn't go up too strong with that. Again, if he would have just went up straight up with that, might have had a good chance at knocking it down. But that three, no good from Erickson. Tough rebound there for Cy Becker. 39-36, your score. Jacoby... Up top to Becker. Becker skips it over to Moore. Moore inside here to Dooms. Back out to Moore. A little ball screen here from Konechny. Outside to Becker. Becker inside. Jump shot is good. Nice move there from Cy Becker. Pump fake. Get the defender on his feet. Attack the basket. Little jump shot is good. He's got 10 points. Andrew Hazer the other way. Skips it over to Erickson. Back up to Hazer. Now back to Erickson. And the Don's still in that 2-3 zone. Kennedy attacks, steps through, good move. He's fouled to go to the line for two. They're going to get Sam Dooms here on the arm. That's his third personal. Team fourth. Don's starting to pick up the fouls a little bit here in this second half. Four team fouls, Nielsville with one. 
Kennedy knocks down the first free throw. Matt Konechny checks in for Sam Dooms. And Cameron Kennedy goes two for two from the free throw line there. He has got 11 points here tonight. Leads Nielsville in scoring. Matt Konechny wide open in the corner. It's short. Again, Matt can hit those, but... That's a, that's a good look. That's a look you want if you're the Dons. But no good there. But again, I, I do think that just playing physical man-to-man -man defense, it, it has an effect on, on shooting, whether you're open or not. You have to expend more energy on the offensive end. And if you're tired, it's a lot harder to hit those jump shots. Inside shot, no good there from Bryce Erickson. Offensive rebound. Now we got a whistle and a foul as the big man, Sam Hayes, Gets a couple offensive rebounds. Cy Becker called for the foul in there. First personal, team fifth. Quick pass in here to Hayes. Becker poked it loose, and that was a great play by Cy Becker to force that turnover because Hayes has some major size advantage on Becker. Moore into the corner for Konechny. Matt Konechny, that is up top. Cy Becker thought about the three attacks instead. Up and under move, nearly an and one. Cy Becker is frustrated with himself for not finishing that, but he'll go to the line for two more. Again, that's kind of what I'm talking about. For these Dons against this man-to-man, -man, that is there. If you can get that quick first step and attack the rim, it is there, especially for a guy like Cy Becker, who's, you can make the argument, is as good as anybody on the Dons at attacking the basket. That's what Cy Becker does best is attack the rim. And he hasn't done a lot of it tonight. Knocks down that first free throw. And, and again, in, in some games, as he's at the Jamie Wenzel Surf Pro free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel as Surf Pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration. Surf Pro like it never even happened. But again, not every game, Cy Becker, Emmett Kinnishny, they have to attack the basket. In most games, the Dons win by 25 points. But again, when you're playing against a good team like Nielsville and they're playing very tough physical man-to-man -to -man defense, you need your players to play to their strengths. And for Cy Becker, that is absolutely attacking the rim. And, and he's as good as anybody in the area at doing it. Kennedy right wing. Tacks the basket. Inside pass here to Boyer. And Boyer lost the ball. That's really what's done Nielsville in. They've got 11 turnovers. Columbus 4. That's really the difference in the game so far. Is turnovers. Blake Jacoby outside for Becker. He'll attack again. Mid-range jump shot is no good. Here's Erickson bring it up. Skips it over to Boyer. Back up top to Erickson. And miscommunication there. And the Warriors just kind of beating themselves right now with some of these turnovers. They've got 12. Again, it's a four-point game. Nielsville has 12 turnovers. Columbus has four. And again, a lot of these turnovers unforced from Nielsville. Again, without them, they very well may be in the lead in this game. Konechny left wing. But again, that is something about the Dons. They will rarely beat themselves. That's why they're tough to beat. One of the reasons they're the top-ranked team in the state for Division 5, Cy Becker from downtown. He has got nine second-half points, 14 overall. Erickson skips it ahead to Hazer. Now over to Cameron Kennedy in the corner for Kretlau. No good, Matt Konechny on the rebound. Don's pushing the pace the other way. Matt Konechny, Sidebacker calling for it. Skips it over to Moore. In the corner now for Emmett Konechny. Emmett going to attack the basket here. Spins baseline, takes some contact, misses the shot. He wanted a foul, doesn't get it. I think that's one. He, it maybe was a foul, but I think Emmett went up with the shot that time thinking he was already fouled and again, usually not... Great, when you go up with a shot with the intent to be fouled there, the referee sometimes don't give you the leniency there when they can see that happening as Cy Becker picks up the foul. Oh, and that is Cy Becker's fourth personal. So I had it wrong on my score sheet. Apologies for the folks out there. That is Cy Becker's fourth personal foul. That is huge. Again, I had it, I had it marked down wrong in my book. I must have missed a couple for Cy Becker. And my book's not official up here, but... That is huge, as that is also huge. Another Nielsville turnover, and now a whistle and a foul on Nielsville. I think that's going to be the fourth on Jace Peckle. And it is. Peckle's fourth personal. 
But again, that, that is something to keep an eye on. Cy Becker has to go to the bench with four fouls, 10 minutes left. And again, I, I really feel like Cy Becker, and Cy Becker is maybe the X factor of this game for the Dons with his ability to attack the rim as well as he can. Now, I think Emmett Kinnishny can attack the rim well uh, also, but he's a little more prone to stick out on that three-point line and shoot those threes. Jacoby, kick to the corner. Charlie Moore for three. It's short. And Moore has not had it going tonight. 0 for 4 from three-point range. And again, I, I, I will credit that to, this, to the physical Nielsville man-to-man defense. Here's a three. Hazer, it's short. Matt Kanishny on the rebound. Now Nielsville getting a little bit stagnant here offensively themselves. Blake Jacoby from downtown, no good. Peckle on the rebound. Nielsville needs points here, and instead they turn it over. They, I don't... Nielsville really is hurting them, is beating themselves right now. Jacoby the other way. Skips it over to Emmett Konechny in the short corner for Kreklau, and Kreklau is fouled before the shot. But right now, if you're Nielsville, you just got to, I think you got to settle down a little bit. As that foul goes against Ashton Sulch, for, for some reason, Nielsville's, they're, they're forcing the ball up the floor. They're, they've really made some, some not smart passes here in this second half, and and again, I, I don't know why it's been a very close game in this second half. And without those turnovers, this, this game may be a different story right now than a, than a Don's seven-point lead. I think the Don's very fortunate to be up by seven right now. Jacoby attacks, kicks out to Matt Konechny, up top to Emmett. Emmett in the corner. Charlie Moore tries another three. This one, he gets to go. Charlie Moore for three. He's got five, and it's a ten-point lead for the Don's. And that's going to be an offensive foul on Cameron Kennedy. Blake Jacoby draws it. Again, that's what the Dons will do. They will step in and force you to go through them. That'll be another turnover for Nielsville. And again, I, I think this game is far from over. But if we look back at the end of this game, I think we're going to look back at this last stretch of five, six minutes is what, if Nielsville loses this game, what cost them this game. I think they turned it over five times in the span of about six possessions. Um in the last five or six minutes. And then again, this game is far from over. You got plenty of time. They came back for more than a 10-point lead in the first half, but this, this last five-minute, six-minute stretch when the Dons still really haven't found a groove offensively, Nielsville still, still doing a nice job defensively with, where, where Nielsville just have, hasn't been able to take advantage because they've been, they've been turning the ball over so much. Erickson up top to Kennedy. Right now they just need a smooth offensive possession here, and there's a good one, I think, there, and he'll go to the line. Two free throws coming up for Ashton Schultz. Lucas Kreklaw doesn't like the call. But he, as he'll pick up his fourth personal. Ashton Schultz to the line. Again, no love lost between these two teams. Great rivalry. And again, Nielsville. Can they played Columbus as tough as anybody has earlier this season. At least anybody in the conference has. Earlier this season, Ashton Schultz misses the free throw again. That's also been a that's also been a trouble spot for Nielsville here tonight. Is, is free throw shooting has been, you know, not where it really should be. Again, if you if you take out some of the missed free throws, and again, I'm I'm playing the big ifs here, but take out some of the self inflicted errors from Nielsville, the missed free throws, the turnovers. This this would be a very different basketball game. Jacoby in the corner goes baseline outside. Moore, another good look, and that one's going to be short from Charlie Moore. Now we got a whistle and possession goes to the Dons. Out of bounds off of Nielsville. Again, I just get the feeling here with eight minutes to go, Nielsville's going to need to start getting something going offensively because Charlie Moore's not going to continue to miss those open looks from three as Sam Dooms gets an easy lay in here. Assist from Emmett Konechny. The Dons lead by 11. We'll take another break. Be back with more Cloverbelt East boys basketball on Zaleski Sports. Central Wisconsin Glass is Central Wisconsin's choice for your next new or remodeled shower and bathroom. The experts at Central Wisconsin Glass will effortlessly guide you through the design and installation process. Have the elegant and modern shower and bathroom you've been looking for. Call Central Wisconsin Glass at 715-387-8010. That's 715-387-8010. And Central Wisconsin Glass on Facebook for your residential, commercial, and vehicle glass needs. 
Welcome back, everybody. 50 to 39, your score. A reminder that coming up at the conclusion of this game will be your Nasonville Dairy post-game show. Nasonville Dairy with fresh cheese curds made daily. Go to nasonvilledairy.com. As again, be sure to stay tuned for that post-game show. We'll be li I'll be live on the court with the winning coach and a winning player as well. So don't go away and stay tuned for your Nasonville Dairy post-game show. Come the Warriors the other way. Erickson brings it up ahead to Hazer. Kennedy skip into the corner. Good look from downtown here, and it's good. Ashton Schultz from three, and that was a picture-perfect offensive possession that time from Nielsville. Great ball movement, attacking, kicking to the outside for an open look from downtown. 50-42 to 42 your score. Moore left wing. Up top to Matt Konechny. In the corner for Blake Jacoby. He attacks, and tough shot, but he's fouled. Jacoby will head to the line for two. I think they're going to get Braylon Boyer here. But again, I, I like the adjustment from the Dons as Blake Jacoby... We'll head to the free throw line to the Jamie Wenzel Surf Pro free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel over at Surf Pro for the best choice in cleanup and restoration. Surf Pro like it never even happened. But Jacoby goes one for one there, or hits the first, I should say. And again, I like the adjustment from the Dons in the second half. Talked a little bit about it at halftime. They have been attacking the basket a little bit more than we saw in that first half. Not settling uh, for only threes. They're still taking threes. Of course they will. They're a great shooting team, but... I, I like Jacoby's attack there. Again, in man-to-man, -man, it, is, is it, it is a more physical defense. You're right up against another player. A lot better chance you can get some fouls if you attack the rim. So again, I like that adjustment from these Dons, whether it's Cy Becker, Blake Jacoby, attacking the rim a little bit more uh, here against this man-to-man -man defense. Here's a little jump hook. No good. That time from Ashton Schultz. Konechny back the other way. Emmett Konechny, that is. Pass to the corner, Charlie Moore. Moore looking to go baseline, hands off to Dooms. Up top to Konechny, back to Matt Konechny. Mack will attack. Back up top to Emmett. And Cameron Kennedy really need to single him out. He's doing such a good job against Emmett Konechny, but there is a three from the sophomore, Matt Konechny. Gets a three to go, and Mack puts the Dons up by 13 with six and a half minutes to play. Kennedy brings it up, attacks the rim. He's fouled. And that foul will go against Blake Jacoby as Cam Kennedy goes back to the line. He'll shoot two. Blake Jacoby picks up his second personal foul. Team eighth. Free throw no good from Kennedy. And the free throw struggles continue tonight for Nielsville. And regardless of what happens in this game, Don's lead by 13. Nielsville is a dangerous team come postseason time. I've, I've seen them live twice this season as Kennedy missed another free throw. This is a team that nobody in that Division IV sectional would want to play. I don't care what seed you are. I, they could beat anybody um, on any given night. And again, they, tonight it's really just been the, the reason they're down by 13 is not, I, I really don't think it's because of some huge talent disadvantage or anything like that. As Blake Jacoby attacks the basket for two, it is because of unforced errors on the offensive end. Whether it's missed free throws or turnovers, that's what's done Nielsville in so far tonight. And Coach Geyer calls timeout. Columbus leads at 57-42. We'll take another break. Back with more Cloverbelt East boys basketball after this on Zaleski Sports. Let your job journey begin at Express Employment Professionals. Find hundreds of employers looking for a candidate like you, all in one place at one time. And let Express Employment help connect you with your future career. With locations in Stevens Point, Wausau, Marshfield, and Medford, you'll find local jobs right in your community, including direct hire and evaluation to hire opportunities. Express Employment specializes in light industrial, skilled trades, professional, and office careers. Begin your job journey today with Express Employment Professionals at Express Pros.com. Witness the difference of a Catholic education at Columbus Catholic Schools. I think everyone should just know um, what makes this place special. But come and see. That's just what the Lord always said. And put your toe in the water. There are great schools and it's a good fit. I'd always want them to come in and to just to feel the goodness and the family atmosphere. I invite everyone just to come in and see what it's about and to see if it might be right for them and their family. We invite you to schedule a tour today. 
Welcome back, everybody, in a game that will almost assuredly decide who wins the Clover Belt East Conference this year. The Dons lead Nielsville 57 to 42. If the Dons win this, it really feels like they're in a position. They've still got conference games left on the road to win, but it feels like they're very much on the road to winning the conference here in 2024. Cam Kennedy misses on the inside shot there. Back the other way come the Dons. Emmett Konichny, top of the key, into the corner. Moore thought about the three-step inside, finds Dooms. Dooms back up to Emmett Konichny. Swings it over to Matt Konichny. Matt has it poked away. Back up top to Emmett Konichny. Pass inside here to Jacoby. Out of bounds off Nielsville. Possession stays with Columbus. But again, I, I know Nielsville is down by 15, but I just have to point out... I. Having done the vast majority of the Dons games this year, having been at the vast majority of their games, nobody outside of Brookfield Academy, a Division III team that beat the Dons this year, has defended the Dons as well as Nielsville has in the two games that these two teams have matched up. Prairie Duchene, another Division III team in that, in that conversation as well, but Konechny right wing, Matt Konechny. I do have to give Nielsville credit for how well they have played Man-to-man -man defense against the Dons tonight. Blake Jacoby attacks the basket. And I think the Dons have found the antidote a little bit here in the second half. Attack the rim. Blake Jacoby's doing it well here in this second half. And Blake Jacoby, shortest guy on the floor, but, man, he's got good control on the inside on those lay-ins. And he's shown it here in the second half. Going to be two free throws coming up for Ashton Schultz. Blake Jacoby picks up his third personal. Team ninth, and Ashton Schultz goes to the line for two free throws. 17-point Columbus lead. And again, it's always hindsight to think about this kind of stuff, but with, with how it wound up turning out in this game, this game not over yet, but with how it's wound up turning out, you got to think, man, what if Nielsville was in man-to-man -man right away in this game? Does do, do the Dons get as hot as they did to start this game? Now, as a coach, you, you don't know. I'm not trying to... And call Coach Geyer in any way for that. As Coach, you don't know how a team's going to start off. Um, and I think with that 3-2 zone, maybe you hope it does defend the three a little bit more. But, again, we're seeing what we saw tonight. It's what if to think about this game maybe. Again, a lot of things going to make this game a little bit different story. But got to give the Dons credit. They have battled. They haven't played a lot of games like this this year. They have not played a lot of games where teams have pushed them. They've played a few. Brookfield Academy beat them. Division Three team Prairie Duchene pushed them a little bit. Nielsville pushed them a little bit earlier this year. Auburndale pushed them a little bit uh, way early in the season. Um, but I think this, this for the Dons, an important game to, to battle through as postseason play comes along. Because this, this is what late postseason play is going to look like as Matt Konichny will head to the free throw line for three free throws. As he's fouled on that three by Ashton Schultz. Again, if the Dons are able to get to a sectional final this year, they'll be playing number, I mean, well, <laughs> I shouldn't uh, speak too far into the future, but they could be playing number two, Potosi. Columbus and Potosi keep jockeying at number one and number two uh, in, the, in our rankings in the state, which, again, are all mathematically based uh, as close as you can get to, w, to the WIAA's formula for picking seeds. Um, the Dons and Potosi have gone back and forth as Matt Kinnishny missing a couple of free throws at the Jamie Wenzel Surf Pro free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel over at Surf Pro for the best choice in cleanup and restoration. Surf Pro, like it never even happened. The number one choice in cleanup and restoration. Matt Kinnishny misses all of them. And now we got a whistle and a foul on Nielsville. Or, excuse me, a this goes out of bounds off of Nielsville. Columbus retains possession. But again, I, I, I do think this is a big game for the Dons because it proves something that... If you've been watching the Dons all year, I think it's something we knew they they had, but it proves something and shows something once again that this team, even in a close ball game, a physical ball game, as Emmett Konechny knocks down another three, continue his, continues his hot scoring night, but even in a physical game where things aren't perfect, offensively it seemed like the other team kind of figured you out a little bit, you're still able to come out with a win and come out with a win that looks like it's going to wind up being close to 20 points. Um, that is, that, that's a big deal, I think, for this Don, Don's team to prove some of that mental toughness, prove some of that toughness that this, this team has a little bit heading into, the, heading into postseason play. Um, they'll get one more test this year, I think, and again, we don't know what can happen in games. They're going to go on the road to Owen with. He's still got to go on the road to Colby. But a couple of teams that, from what we've seen, they look like they're, they're better than. 
Um, as Emmett Kinichini knocks down another one, he has found his hot streak from three once again in this second half. He's got seven threes tonight. But McDonald Central, a team that's coming up, uh, the postponed game, it'll be at McDonald Central. That's a game I've got my eye on a little bit. Uh, McDonald Central, a very storied basketball program, really just sports programs there in general. Uh, regardless if it's boys, girls, whatever, that's a great school for sports, McDonald Central. So but it'll, it'll be interesting to see the Dons go up there. That could be another test for them as well. But I think this is a big one. It's a big test. And to be up 22 right now in this second half, a big deal. And again, if we kind of flip the coin as Erickson goes to the line for a couple of free throws here. Misses the first, but you kind of flip the coin for Nielsville. You look at this game, you've been absolutely on fire the last month and a half of this season, 9-1 and one in your last 10 games. You knew coming on the road against the Dons was going to be tough, um, but I think for Nielsville, looking at this game as Erickson takes a second free throw, knocks it down, but if you look at Nielsville's side, I think you got to come out of this game a little bit disappointed just for the simple fact that it felt like you really had a chance you know, in this game, you really, for a certain time period in this game, you outplayed Columbus. I mean, there's no, there's no sugarcoating that. Nielsville, I think, outplayed Columbus from late in that first half to early in the second half. They outplayed them for that time period, but it was just those self-inflicted errors that, that really got Nielsville tonight. It was the turnovers to start the second half. It was the missed free throws um, for the for the entirety of this game. That's really what did Nielsville and I think tonight. And then Columbus, you know, they've gotten hot a little bit here to end the second half where this final score is going to look a lot bigger than what the game actually was. A lot bigger point differential than what the game actually was here in this one. But it's Matt Kinichini goes one for two from the Jamie Winslow free throw line there. But So for Nielsville, I think you come out of this game a little bit disappointed in that you feel like, man, we, we, we had them there. We, we were playing with them. Uh, I think we proved that we, we could beat them on any given, any given day. Talking about Nielsville against Columbus. Um, but again, you just kind of, you got in your own way a little bit. I, I think Nielsville really did. I think man-to-man -man defense, I, I was just beyond impressed tonight uh, from Nielsville. I really was. Uh, There's going to be their 16th turnover. Um, especially, I think Cameron Kennedy did a great job um, against Emmett Konechny here in this second half as Emmett misses on that three. Um, and also, uh, defending on the inside, Ashton Schultz did a really nice job as well against Krecklau and Beck, or Cy Becker. He was defending a little bit as well there as Matt Konechny, great steal there. Don's going to push and transition here. Konechny outside to Jacoby, whistle, and a travel. Might got a travel here. Be the Don's sixth turnover. But again, you kind of look at this, just to kind of prove my point a little bit with the turnovers. Don's had six turnovers tonight. Nielsville had 17 so far. And I'll count up the free throws here in a bit. And there's two points. And right now I've got I'm eight for 15 at the free throw line for Nielsville here tonight. Again, that's right around 50%. And you want to be you want to be ideally better than that. So again, it could have been better from there. I think the biggest problem was that was that was the turnovers here tonight um, for Nielsville. But Lucas Kreklau is going to head to the free throw line. A couple of free throws to your Jamie Wenzel Surf Pro free throw line. Call Jamie Wenzel over at Surf Pro for the number one choice in cleanup and restoration. Surf Pro, like it never even happened. Kreklau knocks down the first free throw. That's his first points of the night. As Nathan Nemitz and Sam Dooms get ready to check in here for the Dons. Kreklau goes two for two from the line. Dooms and Nemitz check in for Kreklau and Moore. Or excuse me, uh, Emmett Konechny and Moore. 69-47 your score here in this one. But again, I said Nielsville might be a little disappointed after this game just because they felt like they could have had it. But as you look ahead for the Nielsville Warriors, again, they're going to have some conference games here in the Culver Belt East. These are the two best teams in the Culver Belt East. I think as this as the season has gone along, this, this, this has been proven. The Dons are the best team. They've proven that tonight. 
They've now sweep Nielsville on the season series as Lucas Krecklau scores at the rim. But I do think Nielsville has solidified themselves. They are the second, the, the number two team in the conference, I do believe. I would put them ahead of those other Clover Belt East teams. As there's a score for Nielsville. Timeout, Columbus will take another break. Be back with the remaining one minute and 11 seconds of this game after this on Zaleski Sports. For 50 years, the Dental Clinic of Marshfield has served the area with the talent and expertise of big city dentistry with a hometown feel. With our multi-specialty staff and board-certified periodontist, orthodontist, and pediatric dentist, Dental Clinic of Marshfield has solutions for our patients of all ages from 1 to 100. We take pride in being in-network with an array of insurance companies to meet the needs of our community and our patients. No matter what your dental need, the Dental Clinic of Marshfield will be there for you. Welcome back, everyone. 71-49 before the break. Talking a little bit about Nielsville again. Disappointed about this game, but as you look ahead, and they've got some definitely winnable games coming up, and they will. I'm, I'm sure they'll, uh, they, they'll. they might have one more loss on the season, perhaps, but I would say that that's the most you'll probably see from Nielsville in terms of losses the rest of the season. It would be my guess. Um, yeah, you never know what can happen in high school sports, but um, again, this is a team that when postseason time comes around, I know... Those teams that are in their sectional, I think, uh, I don't have the sectional in front of me, but it typically is those Auburn, those Merrillwood South teams are in there with Auburndale, Stratford, Edgar, uh, Marathon. Marathon will have a size advantage for sure, but, I mean, Auburndale's already played them. I, I just think that in terms of who you want to play in the postseason, I, I, if I'm any of those Division Four teams, I, I, this is not a team I'm, I'm licking my chops to play. Obviously, you're not scared of anybody, but this Nielsville team, I think a team that can give anybody – and I mean anybody in that Division Four sectional uh, a run for their money. But that's going to bring us to the end of this game. The Columbus Dons take down the Nielsville Warriors 71-51 to here tonight. Seventy-three to forty-nine is your final score. So seventy-three forty-nine, Columbus takes down Nielsville here tonight as Columbus improves to 16-1 overall on the season, 9-0 in conference play. For Nielsville, they fall to 10-7 overall, 7-2 in conference play. They stay put at second place in the conference. Columbus perhaps still got to win more games, but they've got a long way to clinching this conference here tonight. Nasonville Dairy Post Game Show coming up next. Stay tuned. I'll be live on the floor with Coach Konechny and our Highlight House Player of the Game after this on Zaleski Sports. Good day, my name is Ken Hyman and welcome to Nasonville Dairy here in central Wisconsin, Marshfield, Wisconsin as a matter of fact. Nasonville Dairy actually goes back to 1885. We are the oldest plant in Wood County. When our father brought us here in the early 1960s, we ran 7,500 pounds of milk a day. We now run 1.8 million pounds of milk a day. We buy dairy milk from 200 dairy farmers here in central Wisconsin, produce it and ship it all over the world. We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Fetacaseri, Cafletiri, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edam, Gouda, and Munster. This has allowed us to go to a lot of different countries. Our furthest accounts are now in China, Japan, Canada, Saudi Arabia. We do ship to Mexico, as well as a number of other places throughout the world. This is what we call Cheese Making 101. We tried to walk you through the cheese plant today and we're in hopes that you see our people, what they're doing, and the amount of work that goes into producing the products that we hope you enjoy.
We make a lot of different cheeses. We make cheddar, Colby, Monterey, Farmer's Cheese, Peach Cheese, Cuesa Blanca, Cuesa de Fira, Seco, Parm, Romano, Asiago, Fontina, Feta Caceri, Cafeteria, Cafla Graviera, 20 different flavors of Monterey, as well as making Edam, Gouda, and Munster. And the cheese be with you. The Sports Den, located on Marshfield's sunny south side since 1975. The Sports Den has the area's best selection of outdoor equipment, fine top brands of snowshoes, cross country and downhill skis, snowboards, swimming equipment, skateboards, and more. The Sports Den has a full service bike repair center along with top bike brands, specialized Trek, and others. The Sports Den is Central Wisconsin's fat bike headquarters. Visit the Sports Den in Marshfield Monday through Saturday and thesportsden.net. Welcome back, everybody, to your Nasonville Dairy post-game show. Nasonville Dairy with fresh cheese curds made daily. Go to nasonvilledairy.com. Out here live on the court here. It's a pretty excited environment as I'm just waiting for Coach Konechny and Emmett Konechny, our Highlight House player of the game, to come out here uh, here tonight and talk with us. They'll be here shortly, but before they get out here, again, we got to talk a little, bit, a little bit more about that game because it was a 20-point win for Columbus here tonight. But, again, it, watching that game did not feel like a 20-point win for Columbus. And now... If you're Columbus, what we kind of talked about there at the end of the broadcast was, I think it's really important for this Don's team, or a big win for this Don's team, obviously to, to beat the current second place team in the conference right now, a big win, but I think the way they had to win this one in a game where de defensively Nielsville forced them into some tough shots, offensively it wasn't as smooth as maybe we're typically used to seeing from the Don's for a lot of that game. They kind of had to just grind it out and grit it out, um, kind of like you'd have to do in a really tough po postseason game. So. I think having to win a game like this for the Dons likely will prove beneficial um, as we move kind of closer down to the, the final stretch of this season, which is not that far away. Uh, final game of the regular season, about a month away now um, in boys basketball. So I think, and now we're going to be joined by Coach Konechny. Coach, I'm just kind of finishing up talking about there. Not a, not the prettiest game at all times. You played against the Nielsville team that's really tough. They, they played a lot of uh, close games against good teams this year. Talk about how you guys were able to kind of pull that game out there. It seemed like you obviously won by 20 points, but obviously the game felt a lot, a lot closer than that. It did. You know, I, I have a ton of respect for their coaching staff. Um, all three or four of those guys over there do a really good job of making adjustments. And the way they've improved over the course of the year, I think that team started 0-4, and, and I think they've won 9 out of the last 10 or 11 now. And the loss was a quadruple overtime game. So uh, we shot it really well early against their 3-2. Uh, they adjusted and played some man, which we didn't handle as well. Uh, and I thought they had some kids make some shots. That Kennedy kid can shoot it. Um, you know, Erickson's a really good athlete. We, we lost those guys in transition a few times. Uh, but then I was really proud of our guys. When they cut it to three, like mid-second half, uh, we really kind of tightened things up defensively, uh, played a little more man, uh, and then made some shots on the offensive end. And uh, just, just a great night for our program. And we, we say all the time the Nielsville games make us a lot better uh, because they're well coached and they have really good athletes. And uh, very, very proud to, to get a win tonight. Yeah, and you brought up Nielsville switching from that zone to the man. That, that's what stood out to me on the, on the broadcast is that you're right, you guys did seem to struggle with that a little bit, but how did you guys kind of get better with that, especially in that second half as that kind of moved along? I, it looked like Blake was attacking the basket a little bit more, um, uh, Cy Becker attacking the basket until he got into some foul trouble there. But I guess how did you, as a coach, how did you kind of make those adjustments? What did you say to the team? How did you guys kind of adjust to that? Not always easy to do if you maybe expected them to play zone or you, you, were, you were used to that. Yeah, I thought against the zone we got really good looks early in possessions. Uh, and then when they went to man, we, we kind of expected to get a look that early in the possession and just weren't patient enough. You know, you're one or two passes away, um, more hockey assists is what we call it, where the, the guy that throws the pass to the guy that gets the assist is really the guy making the play. And uh, We seem to have more of that once they close that gap. Yeah, and then defensively probably was a big story for you guys tonight. Uh, at least you look at the, the final score. Talk about what you guys did well defensively, obviously sticking in that, that zone you guys have been in a lot of this year. But what did you guys do well defensively? Because didn't seem like Nielsville got into a, a great rhythm uh, here tonight offensively uh, here tonight. Well, I think we, we did a better job of understanding personnel. You know, if a kid's left-handed, right-handed, uh, making sure we got bodies on people. We gave up a lot of second chances in the first half, um, just simply not, not boxing out. And, um, and give them credit, they crash hard and they have some size, but the second half we were much better. Um, Lucas getting in foul trouble doesn't help, Cy picking up four doesn't help, but uh, we were able to battle through and I'm really proud of our team. You talk about this game, uh, we're playing Nielsville makes you guys better as a team. I guess talk a little bit about more, a uh, little bit more about that specifically with this game because it just felt like kind of a gritty grinded out, you know, it wasn't always the prettiest kind of game that, you know, maybe you might have in the postseason at some point, 
Talk a little bit more about that, maybe how you think this might make you guys better or tested you maybe a little bit. Well, I think a challenge for us and for every team really is to treat a, a possession when you're up by 20 with, with 10 left in the first half the same as you're going to treat a possession tie game 30 seconds left. And um, Whatever we do, we're building habits. And, and I thought tonight was a night, especially second half, we built some good habits, uh, being disciplined you know, in our screening and our spacing, uh, really sharing the ball sideline to sideline. Uh, when we do that, we're a tough out. When we don't do that, then anybody can beat you. So definitely some things to work on, but a good win. All right, thanks for your time, Coach. Congrats thank, on the win. Thank you for the coverage. Absolutely. All right, now we're going to be joined by two hot house players of the game, Sam Dooms and Emma Kanishi. And Sam, I'll start with you. This was kind of a, against Neosville, your guys' conference rival. You're, you're the two top teams in the conference coming into this game. You obviously played them once already. It seemed like tensions were high out there, an emotional game. You know, I think you got obviously you guys both want to beat each other. It seemed like your kind of game. It's kind of a guy battling there, gunning it out for this team. How did you feel about playing in this game uh, and what this was kind of like out there? And kind of a, a game that felt a lot closer than the final score you wound up saying. Yeah, um, I think it was a lot of fun. It, I mean, it was my first time being in a in an environment this electric. It was lots of fun with all the kids screaming behind. Close game. Uh, yeah, I think it was a lot of fun, and we can do we can do a little bit better. We had stretches in there where we were turning the ball over, not playing good defense, but great to see us like pull out in the end. All right, and then. Emin, I want to ask you about your guys' offensive adjustments a little bit because they came out in that 3-2 zone and you were hitting threes. You guys were getting getting your threes and then they came out in that man-to-man. -man. You guys slowed down a little bit offensively. Nielsville came back. How did you guys adjust in the second half to kind of figure out your offense again and get, get going again there in that second half? Uh, yeah, that zone is something that they've done the last couple times we've played them and it's been effective. So we kind of had to spend a lot, a lot of time this week analyzing what we've done in the past and see how we can change that. And I thought the coaches did a great job and then the players obviously we we felt that we did a great job of, of listening to the coaches and then adjusting to that and uh, just sticking to the game plan to get them out of that zone. And then obviously it was man the rest of the game. And then Sam, I'll ask you one more question. Uh, defensively for you guys here tonight, um, I think you guys did a pretty good job in that 2-3. Talk about what you were seeing out there defensively, how you guys were kind of able to, it didn't seem like, I mean, Nielsville had quite a few turnovers tonight. You guys forced some of those. Uh, how, what, how, evaluate how you guys played defensively tonight. Uh, I think we played hard. A lot of communication helped uh, find shooters. Again, there were stretches in there where we didn't do that, and that's where they went on a run. But overall, I think we did good, and we learned a lot, and we can we can learn from this and hopefully do uh, better in the future. And then Emma, come back to you. I kind of thought just from Brock or just from being up there, it felt like a playoff environment in here tonight. Obviously, a conference game, and and it kind of felt like a playoff game where not everything's perfect, but you come out with a win, and you, and you wind up coming coming out with that. Talk about. Do you think this game, a game like this, maybe helps you guys, or or is a good game for you guys to play as the season go, goes down? Or talk a little bit about that, maybe. I mean, yeah, it's it's re obviously really good for us to play because they're a good team and they're physical, and, and they always compete with whoever they're playing. So, I mean, credit to them. They're always up at the top of the conference and up at the top of. Uh, whatever rankings they're in, they're always a good team. They always compete. So, I mean, getting a game with them twice a year is obviously huge for us going forward. And then last question for you. As you've kind of come back from your injury now, back in the starting lineup, back into your kind of normal role, it seems like, out there, how do you think the team's kind of coming along or you're just getting used to back to you guys being uh, at full strength again? How do you think you guys are coming along in that department? Uh, I think it's, it's coming along well. I, I think it's really important that nobody cares who gets the credit. If Charlie has 30, Blake has 30, size 30, it doesn't really matter as long as there's a W in that column after the game. So that's just kind of what we're focusing on and trying to get ready for the playoffs. And obviously we got a lot of big conference games coming up. Loyal's a good team. They just had a big win over Colby. And then we got Colby again and Owen Withy. So, I mean, they're good teams. And we got uh, two more games after that in the conference. So those will be big games getting us ready for the playoffs. All right, I'll get you guys in the house now. I know you how this works. So let me get out of the camera. I'll count you down. Right? I'm Emmett Konechny. I'm Sam Dooms. And we're in the house. Oh All right, great job, guys. All right, that was Emma Kanishny and Sam Dooms, our Highlight House Players game. Is there. They're getting a bunch of autographs here. you got a lot of the youth Columbus Dons, uh, the Dons dribblers, I think they call them, um, getting autographs from uh, these, these Dons seniors, or these Dons players out here tonight. Uh, cool stuff. And the Dons come out with a 20-point win here tonight. They remain undefeated in conference play here this season. Um, and again, they got conference games coming up, not over yet, but this game I think goes a long way to, to trying to seal that uh, outright conference title here in the Clover Belt East this year. But the Dons come out with a win. Great game here tonight. Wanna, that'll bring us to the end of our Nasonville Dairy postgame show. Nasonville Dairy, the fresh cheese curds made daily. Go to nasonvilledairy.com. And that's going to bring us to the end of our broadcast here tonight. I want to thank everybody for joining us here tonight. For myself, Kale Jacoby, alongside Isaac Eagle and Elena Eagle doing the production. want to say goodnight, and we'll see you next time on Zaleski Sports.